last week I announced the the big project that I've been the big secret project that I've been working on, you know, for the past while. Finally got word that like I was able to start talking about it because you know they want to time this stuff and whatnot. I, I would call it a graphic novel, but it's not a not it's nonfiction, so it's a graphic biography. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and uh, there is in the show notes below there is a a pre-order. Uh, link that you can click on if if, if you want to you know pre-order your copy of that book. Congratulations, Tom. Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, that you've been working on this uh, for a long time. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, it's been in kind of like a uh, you know planning stage and an initial stage for a while, and then it's like, and then it reached a point where it's like, okay, it's happening, and then it was just like hunker down, get in, get you know, and and as the um, you know deadlines sort of like loomed and things got you know more and more. That's that's kind of why the show kind of disappeared for a little while. You we kind of went on a little hi hiatus because it was, yeah, it was just like, you know, I don't have time for anything but this, you know. It's a it's a classic, man. I, excellent Thanks. work, excellent Thank work. Thanks for, uh, you know, letting me get a little, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little early bird. Uh, yeah, like as I was working on it, I'd kind of like slide you some some pages and stuff to check out. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you liked this. It's awesome. It's going to, like, there's going to be a, free comic book day version of it like like an excerpt of it like a pretty a pretty meaty uh you know slice nice. of the book uh which will be in may on free comic book day um which that feels like it's so far in the future but like we're just about into march it's almost march so it's just like you know two months after that you know it'll be here before you know it. Yeah, it'll be here really quick and then but the full book is gonna like premiere at comic-con uh which is i think in august and then, and then it's going to be like in like sort of wider release in September. And again, like Comic Con August feels like so far away. But yeah, these these months are just going to fly by. Like I kind of want to get another project lined up and completed before August, just because like <laughs> August feels like it's that far away. Oh, but yeah, man. I don't know. Like August, that's coming out, and then the uh, the Jack Kirby Jack Kirby's Star Warriors. <laughs> That'll be coming out the same month, so it's like... That's gonna... Yeah. Got what some, a, some Stan Lee, some Jack Kirby. Comics can be feast or famine, you know, especially, like, during the pandemic and stuff. It's like, there, you know, there's some dry times, but then it's like all of the... Like, it was kind of the same thing with the Jack Kirby book, because it was like, I had, like, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and then Jack Kirby, like, one after the other. It was kind of, you know, and it's like, sometimes there's, like, you know, like a year where it's like, hmm, you know... You, you're really uh, busting it down with this, mm -hmm. man. Thanks. When it drops, we'll have to do like a uh, total recall on the ro like uh, on location. Yeah, there there might be a lot of like selfie mode, like <laughs> hey everybody, it's me, you know, hey, you know, here, yeah. you know, here's a special total recall <laughs> yeah. from uh, uh, you know from the hotel room, or or here's a special total recall from the floor of of Comic Con. You know, like yeah, uh, when I did uh, the last time I did Comic Con, it was when Transformers versus GI Joe was coming out, and I had just gotten my first smartphone my first iphone uh was you know maybe like a month or two before that so like you know it, it was kind of like <laughs> whoa what's this like new toy i got you know i mean i like i haven't ironed out the details of like what this like book tour is go is gonna be like but i you that's know i imagine it's gonna be uh because i mean that's that's what uh the jack kirby book i was supposed to be on like a big book tour for that which you know for obvious reasons never ended up happening but so in the heart uh, of the know, pandemic yeah so so it'll be interesting super exciting you do like a like a stunt and you pair parachute down uh, into like a... I'm, I'm much more ready for that that sort of thing now and it, and it feels like that kind of thing that that kind of uh you know stunts stunt. are kind of like very uh Stan. appropriate to stan lee say... you know such a showman you know <laughs> like i've been doing like a stan lee imitation like ever since i was a kid like watching spider-man and his amazing friends because he'd like narrate them and so uh, you know what, Spidey getting himself <laughs> into now, true believers. And, and he kind of, so kind of, he had like a like a lateral lisp and like a nasal thing. And like as I got like deep into like Stan Lee stuff and so, you know, you learned that like he had like a deviated septum and so, like you learned the medical reasons <laughs> for why he had his sort of you know. This <laughs> is your old pal, Stan Lee, smiling Stan. <laughs> What's uh, you know, Quasimodo? It's uh, you know, uh, the Hulk versus Quasimodo, the Dread Dormammu. <laughs> the Dread Dormammu. Dormammu. Yes, it's supposed to be Dormammu, but he would call him Dormammu. But I, I think you can chalk that up.
to like a New York accent where like you're not exactly sure when you're supposed to put an R in a word or take an R out, you know? That's so Your funny. mother. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, He's like, the Dread Door Marmu. The Dread Door Marmu. In I Am Stan, some like, like they're just going to be like burned into the lexicon, like, mm -hmm. like, like pages in that. Mm -hmm. Especially the, uh, his hair <laughs> transformation <laughs> is fucking <laughs> iconic. <laughs> Holy, it's going to blow people's minds. Yeah, like, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty, brother. In that movie, American Hustle, he, he kind of has like the Stan Lee look. Yes, and he's, he does. And he's got like, he's got like, you know, bad hair. Like he's, <laughs> he's bald, but then wears this elaborate thing. And like the Stan Lee transformation is like really fascinating and staggering. You know, I was aware of the, the Stan Lee transformation and, and of course like working on the Jack Kirby the Jack Kirby book, I got to go deep with Stan Lee. Like like there was I, I had to learn a lot about Stan Lee in the course I mean I, I already, you know, knew a lot about Stan Lee, but I, you know, in the course of making that book, there was a lot of Stan Lee and so I was very familiar with that transformation he underwent. But then like it, that like video surface of like Stan Lee, like just a couple years before he he did his makeover, and people were like shocked by it because he does he looks like an old man, he looks like Stan Lee's grandfather, and then he puts on the shades, he 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 cements some hair down, grows a goatee, of which eventually he shaves down to a mustache, and it's like it's like he you know he he's he's back in the game you know <laughs> like uh... he's ready to go to the disco with his big medallion and his hairy chest uh, he, he probably he probably had fake hairy chest put a, you know because that was like a thing that they would have like i think there's even like a hulk episode like that where it's like these guys who like uh you know go to like the disco and they put they put on like you know fake hair and all this fake stuff and i think they even put on fake chest hair <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like yeah. I get hair plugs in my yeah, chest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not just a member. I'm the president. <laughs> you know, like like all the hair stuff with Stan Lee. Like it would be, maybe like you know, beside the point or whatever. In, in but like it's so essential to like the story of Stan Lee. <laughs> He's combing the hair from his ass up over his head. Yeah, Stan Lee. His his story is interesting. There's like um. It isn't like because I I met Stan like I met him at like a comic convention just kind of just kind of like at the you know in the hotel just kind of like you know uh, you know was waiting for the elevator at the same time and it was like he was um, you know he was very light on his feet he like just like moved very fast kind of sort of seemed very energetic very bouncy and then, and then like you watch like like there's there's like some home movies and stuff that his family did and it's like he's like jumping rope and, and okay. like he's, and he's wearing like a full suit like he's wearing i think he's wearing like 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 the vest that you would wear on like in a three-piece suit he's like he's fully dressed, and he's in the backyard like jumping rope and stuff so know. he still had some vitality there yeah he i mean it's i think he's kind of like it must be like a personality type or something but he is like mick jagger or something it feels like it's the same thing where it's like just this like energy and, and like mick jagger's thing was that his dad was his dad was like one of these early like physical fitness kind of guys and so Mick kind of oh, grew up with that. that it's kind of like you know just constantly on the move but like Stan Lee ha whatever that was Stan Lee had, had it, it too where he's like constantly on the move about you know lean and mean and 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 so it kind of um you know it 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 really does like keep you young and like he was you know like it, it that that is sort of the model of like health that you kind of want to have you want to um you know, you, you want to slow aging as much as possible and you want to be in like really great health, really great health, and then at the last minute have your health go into steep decline and, and die. Like you don't want to have this like, you don't want to have this like slow decline of health. And I feel like Stan had that. Like he, he made it into his 80s and That's made awesome. it into his 90s and was still like, you know, very, very sharp, very mentally sharp very physically sharp. And then it was really just like the last couple of years of his life that he had sort he of the steep, the steep drop. So it, it, I, uh, I got choked up reading the Jack Kirby book. Mm -hmm. And I also got choked up reading the, uh, your Stan Lee book too, man. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, when, when you're up, man, when, when you're doing like the scope of somebody's entire life, like I don't care who it is, but there's something like very poignant about viewing a person's lifetime in in kind of like fast forward, like, like, uh, you know, with Jack Kirby and with Stan Lee, like, you know, you can read 
each of those books in one sitting. You know, I mean, you, you can space it out or you can read it in one sitting, but it is like you start on page one and it's like a little kid and then you get to the end page and it's like, you know, this, you know, you get towards the end and it's like an old man. Like, you, you can't help, you know, it's like, it's like that movie Boyhood or something. You know, yeah. when you see like somebody like age in real time, it's, it's just very, very sort of humbling and stuff. And then like working on it, it was like that for me because I was just fully focused on it, spending, you know, my days basically, like when I did the Jack Kirby book, spending my days with Jack Kirby more or less, and then spending my days with Stan Lee. And it, it is like very sobering and you're just sort of contemplating like, life in general and the, the scope of life and getting there and then and then when you know you know there's you know some some twists and turns in stan's story that are you know kind of you know sobering and you know like you're you're uh, th those aren't the only two i even got um i get mega misty ad during reading go bots too okay you, yeah you're more, <laughs> you do it like <laughs> well i mean i do i have like a sentimental streak you it know? really does <laughs> like i love great work man no thanks in GoBots, <laughs> you got got me there, and then the, I I remember the moment like in Jack Kirby when he like looks right at like the reader mm -hmm. and starts talking directly to you, and I, I was like I started to like tear up. Yeah, man. yeah, you know they're both sort of like meditations on a lot of different things, but just like mortality is you know sort of sort of a big a big part. I guess because Jack Kirby and Stanley they both sort of like inhabited this world of like kind of imagination and uh you know like and you like like comics as sort of this like youthful kind of thing and colorful and flamboyant and grandiose and so it only like creates even more of like a a contrast with just sort of you know the, the sort of humbling nature of like day-to-day -day life and and you know how you know like like we are very uh, sort of you know fragile compared to the these these Super supermen and women and and robots and you know god you know gods and things you know you choked me up but also cracked me up at mm -hmm. the same time and there's some great like uh mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh it was like the wedding <laughs> there was like a wedding scene mm -hmm. and then the, the hulk was there <laughs> 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 killing me <laughs> yeah you know like stanley's life <laughs> It is, like, when you view it all, because, like, you know, just, like, as a kid and stuff, you're seeing, like, little bits and pieces, you're seeing, like, little things and that, but when you put it all together, it is almost like, am I hallucinating, you know, it's because it's like, you're doing this, you're doing that, and then all of a sudden, you're, like, officiating <laughs> Spider-Man's wedding, and, yeah, the Hulk oh. is there, and it's, like, this really crazy-looking That's, like, one of, of my Hulk. other favorite yeah. scenes in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I would get that. They're like, what kind of, what, what do you want tattooed? I'm like, yeah, like as fucking it, crazy Hulk. I, I had that same sense doing the Jack Kirby book too, because it is like you just sort of lay it all out, and it's like holy, like it's like, you know, he's 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 doing this stuff as a kid and stuff, and he's sitting down at the drawing board and he's doing that, he's going here, he's going there, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now he's uh, <laughs> shipping off to Europe, and then now he's like being shot at, and it's, it's like, whoa, like whoa, this is, this is a crazy story. Where's this going? And, you know, Stan, you know, has, like, a lot of that kind of stuff, too. And, and it is, like, his life, you know, like, the craziness just keeps going and going. And because he lived, so he lived a very long life. And unlike Kirby, he got to, like, really benefit, you know, in later life from, you know, sort of, like, everything that had, had come before. He, he really, you know, he got to sort of be, become, like, a legend in his own time or whatever. Uh, you know, much more so than, than Kirby w was able to do. I feel like if Kirby had lived on like another decade or two, he would have kind of gotten that sort of thing too. But he was just, it was just kind of like the beginning of that sort of thing. Even, you know, even with like the baby boomers who were sort of like the audience that, that these two had cultivated, it was kind of like just the beginning of them kind of, you know, taking over and stuff. Well, well, I'm crying, I'm laughing, I'm getting fucking anger, <laughs> angry, <laughs> like... I can run the whole gamut. Yeah, it's 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 a must must uh, oh, read. Cool. Yeah, I was like I I really again I tried to cater like when I'm working on a comic I try to like I, I I want each book to be a completely different thing like like doing you know Transformers and, and GI Joe and then going over to GoBots it's like you know there's a lot of overlap in those two like 
properties or whatever. And I didn't like I wanted to make two very different works. You know, I didn't I didn't want to like, you know, repeat myself or make them redundant in any way. And like, you know, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, there's a lot of overlap and stuff, but I I tried to make a completely different comic, a completely different sort of reading experience for it and it and 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 to customize it to the 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 subject. And like this yes. is sort of it's you know it's a very like Stan Lee was this very like light on his feet kind of guy and and I I tried to get some of that across just in the style and the presentation of this book I like it just kind of pulls you in and, and keeps you going at, at like it maximum page, velocity page turner man mm -hmm. it was it had a blast reading it it's the it's part of the trilogy mm -hmm. with and I'm like what a that's fucking it, it fits per, it's a per, perfect yeah piece it's, it's of nice the it's like you got Jack Kirby. You got Stan Lee, and then you have this like famous, you know, creation of the two of them, like right there in the middle. You know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, nice, yeah. you know, because because uh, you know I can do a Jack Kirby story on my own, I can do a, a Stan Lee story on my own, but I kind of need Marvel's involvement. You know, I need I need the go ahead from Marvel to do the, the Fantastic Four. So I'm just I'm I'm fortunate that like that you know it kind of that that part was able to be there. To, you know, yeah, that, that, that's that's a be thing of beauty. Yeah, I, I'm so happy for you, man. Well, thanks, Matt. And, uh, you know, but it, it, it'll be cool. I, I, I can't wait till you get an actual copy of it yeah. you know, to read. The cover is, is brilliant, too. Oh, thanks. That, it really pops. I love that, like, what, you know, that yellow on there, mm -hmm, too. The colors, the colors. Yeah. yeah, it's a different, it's a different palette. The, co the cover's a different palette than, than, I, than I've used before. I laughed. I cried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cracked my ass up. I got, like... I was like, I'm not a fucking. Yeah. I mean, that, that 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 feels like that seems to me like Stan. You know, he was interested in entertaining, like to sort of you know present that full. Like I think, I think that was that was something that was very important to him to sort of get across, and 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 maybe you know one of the um, things that kind of uh, distinguished his sort of like editorial voice, you know. Yeah, those are magical Stanley Glass. You like fully transform. Yeah, this is um, like I'm just setting everything up for like the next project, which is my body horror uh, graphic novel where I turn in, I make a comic about Stan Lee and then I turn into him. When, when I met Stan Lee, like I, I talked to him and like shook his hand and stuff. He like shakes hands with me and it's like a body switch thing. Oh, so yeah. now I'm stuck in Stan Lee's body for like the remaining years of his, and he gets to live out like a, like a, you know, a whole new life <laughs> has like decades ahead of him. He transfers <laughs> his Stan energy through his, your handshake yes. and you're like, Oh God, what's happening? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, you start d double crossing. <laughs> <laughs> All my hair falls out. <laughs> my hair falls out and I need to like glue it back together and fold it back on there. That's the other thing with Stan Lee. When he does the um, Spider-Man hands, yeah. he does it wrong. He does it wrong. He puts his thumb here and Spider-Man does not put his, like, it, like that's like, hey, dude. Like, but that's not Spider-Man. Spider-Man doesn't do that. Spider-Man does this. So it, it, it like... You know, it, it was always gall because you'd always see these pictures of him doing this with the thumb. But it's like, because Spider-Man is shooting. If Spider-Man did this and then put his thumb down, he would just be doing a continuous stream of webs. Like, like that's what he does when he's trying to, like, he's like create this, like, hard shell around, like, the rhino or something. Yeah, he's he, like, like, that is, that is, like, you're stuck in... He, nobody told him, like, Stan, it's this, it's this. So you can go, pew, pew, pew. it's not, pew. and then lock it down, lock it down. He's yeah, like, the, the whole screen, like, just fills up with with webs. <laughs> I'm the inventor of Spider-Man, and, and if I say that this is how he does it, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, Steve Ditko fucked it up, and he didn't he didn't draw it correctly. He drew Spider-Man like this, and, and He's like, uh, so did all the other artists. But I, I meant for Spider-Man to do this. He's still with us. Yeah, I'm Tom Scholey, author of I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. And there's a pre-order link in the show notes below. And uh, I'm also the author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, uh, which there's an order now uh, link in the show notes below. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. Follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb. Now keep smiling, <laughs> true believer. <laughs> Excelsior! Excelsior!